What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're jumping into another two parter Dennis de Blasio story time, Maynard the Mob and Shirley. And then we're going to jump right into Shirley and Maynard Ferguson with El Dopa from 1970. Coming at us from Stacy. Much, much love. I definitely appreciate a good story to go along with a great song. Let's see what we got. Get over show Dennis de Blasio all the love in the world if you enjoy it. We've been subbed up. We're already smashing the like button. All right, so this is a good one. This is a, a real epic story. Once in a while, we get uh, a really involved epic story that maybe about five of these stories are, uh, they span We heard the Sesame decades, Street story. That was awesome. Stories. So uh, it actually took me a minute to figure out how I would even explain it because there's so much in it and it bounces around different times like it goes in the future and then it goes in the in the past and it happens in the present and it's kind of like a quentin tarantino movie where it bounces <laughs> all over the place here we go but anyway, it's gonna be a while right uh i'll tell it the best i can and i'm sure people will weigh in on this story because a lot of people heard it some of the guys were actually out when this happened i uh, I wasn't around when any of this happened, but you'll get the gist of it. So people will weigh in and I'm sure say different things about the story because there's so much in it that's, um, and every time I heard it, it was different. So what, am I, what are you going to do? What are you so going to anyway, do? Here it is. What are you going to do? We pull into Las Vegas and we drive by the Sands Hotel and Maynard looks out at the Sands, we're in the bus and he says, yeah, they saved my butt again. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? Because he would always do that. He'd pitch a little something. He would get me interested. And then I would uh, um, ask him. And then the story would come out. So we had our little routine down by then. He he knew how to uh, bait me. And bait me he did. <laughs> and it was all good baiting. So anyway, he says, and they really saved my butt. I said, who saved your butt, boss? What are you talking about? He goes, oh, you want to hear a good one? Oh, that's a good one. All right. And then he proceeds to tell me this story. So now we got to stop and we have to go back in the past. Maynard hung out with Timothy Leary. And uh, Timothy Leary was doing, um, I'm cooking. Tim Timothy Leary was doing um, uh, experiments with um, LSD. And uh, he taught at Harvard. A bunch of people and, were uh, doing experiments with that back in the day. Of Harvard. Just look up Timothy Leary, whole movement. Anyway, Millbrook, New York, they had this house where a lot of the, he lived and artists and Maynard was one of the musicians who lived there with the family, all this business. And what happened was they were doing these experiments, Harvard fired Timothy Leary, then Timothy Leary con continued his, his um, commune, you know, out there in this place, Millbrook. And uh, many people know much more about this at time in Maynard's life than I do. I, I only hear it from stories, but anyway, uh, they get busted. The whole place gets busted and everybody has to wind up going to court. Maynard has to go to uh, New York State Supreme Court for this trial uh, with all these people. And I think like one of the people that broke in, or well, broke in, one of the FBI agents that broke in and busted everybody, uh, whether or not it was legal or illegal, I guess they weren't sure yet, but, but they were going to make a case about it. They didn't like Timothy Leary. They just sort of got everybody. And Maynard had to go to court, and uh, the cat Maynard wants was, the food was too. never an American citizen. Maynard was a Canadian citizen. So what happened was um, he's worried about going to court because if he's found guilty, he may lose his green card and not be able to play in the United States. And if you're a jazz musician and you can't play in the United States, it's over. So That's like a death sentence. This, okay? So he... <laughs> He's, uh, he puts together this case, he has files, he has lawyers, he's got, you know, he's putting together this big case. And uh, the case is booked for a certain time. And what happens is Maynard shows up to play at Sands Hotel. Now, at the time when we drive in, now we're back in the bus. So at the, we were staying at Circus Circus, a different casino, but we happened to drive by the Sands. And this is what got this thing started, this story. So anyway... We go back, we're back in time. Maynard is worried about this court case. Uh, I guess this is 60s, 70s, I guess, somewhere around then. And um, 
before the court case comes up, he has to go play the Sands Casino. So he goes with his band, and his band is going to open for Tommy Sands. Tommy Sands is a vocalist who was married to Frank Sinatra's daughter. Tommy Sands is Frank Sinatra's son-in-law. So Maynard's band opens. Maynard's going to play his set. And the casino figures, instead of hiring a whole different band to back up Tommy Sands, let's have Maynard's band back up Tommy Sands. So Maynard's band will play, they're set, and then the band just stays there, and out comes Tommy Sands, and they'll back up him with Tommy Sands' music. It's, it's a lot less hassle. Yeah, makes sense. So that's sense. the plan. Logistically. Now, Maynard, Maynard winds up going to um, rehearsal. He's rehearsing the band, his part. Guys sound great. Guys are traveling. The band sounds great. You know, they all know the music. They've been on the road playing it. So then Maynard goes and he sits down while Tommy Sands comes out. And Tommy Sands has a, a band direct, a band direct, a musical director that comes out and conducts Maynard's band. This musical director knows Tommy Sands' music. So and this was Maynard telling us the story. And uh, they play the music. And Tommy Sands comes in like um, two measures early. So... Uh, the musical director cuts off the band and says, um, Tommy, you messed up. Tommy goes, I don't think I messed up. No, he says, you messed up. There's an eight-measure introduction. You came in after six <laughs> measures. Mainers band guys are just sitting there, you know, listening. Uh, when a conductor and the act fight each other, musicians just kind of sit and check it out. They yeah, I would. I'm happen. not getting involved. And um, so what happens is they try it again, and it doesn't work. It does, doesn't. It, Tommy Sands comes in wrong again. So now, Tommy Sands, Tommy Sands' is, um, um, musical director is get they go back and forth. Tommy, you messed up. No, you messed up. You messed up. They start to yell at each other. Go, blah, blah, blah. They start screaming at each other. And, um, and Tommy Sands was wrong. But he didn't want to admit it. And the, the musical director was arguing back and forth. Musical director walks out. Tommy Sands walks away. Guys in the band are just sitting there like, uh-oh. Nothing to do. Guy's in a band. Yeah, what do we do now? So Maynard's just watching him. This guy comes up to Maynard and says, Hey, Maynard, can you, can you like conduct this thing for Tommy? Tommy, can you conduct this thing? And Maynard goes, Well, you know, Tommy was wrong. If I conduct it, Tommy's still going to be wrong. And the guy says, Look, I don't know if I'm wrong or I don't know from any of this, but I'm the, I'm the director. I'm the entertainment guy here. And he says, This cannot get back to Frank. They don't want the fact that Tommy Sands is upset. Get it back to Frank Sinatra, his father-in-law. So he goes, just get it back to Frank. So Maynard goes, well, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do it. I'll try. So Maynard goes up. Now Maynard's in front of his own band. And Tommy Sands comes out again. And the guys are all, they're all like, it's like a brotherhood. You know, they have their own, a band sort of has its own heartbeat and tendencies. It kind of moves like a school of fish. Once the guys get tight enough, everybody thinks it's kind of the same way. And you can kind of pick up, you can pick up on somebody who's going to work a scam or somebody's going to try and act a certain way. It's just their radar gets better. So anyway, Maynard gets in front of his band. Tommy Sands comes out. They play Tommy Sands' music. Tommy Sands comes in wrong again. And Maynard turns to Willie Maiden. This is Maynard telling me this. Because Willie Maiden, the band's road manager and Barry player, a great arranger too. Maynard and Willie were like best friends, and, but it was a scam. It was like a little, it was like a bit these guys would do. Maynard looks at Willie Maiden and he says, Willie, now I see why Tommy's coming in wrong. I heard what you've been doing and I, I'll get somebody new to fill in your position. We don't need you if you're going to mess that up again. I heard what you did. And everybody, Willie didn't do anything, but Willie would just do this like, if you look up Willie Maiden, you'll see this. He could get a Maynard said he could get a really good puppy dog face. Don't yell at me. So Willie would would do this thing, and Tommy Sands is loving it. Tommy loves the fact that Maynard's yelling at somebody, and it's not his fault. And Willie's playing it up, and so you know Tommy Sands is telling Maynard, "Oh no, you don't have to fire him, Maynard." And Maynard says, like, "I'll fire him. I'll, I'll get rid of him. I'll fire him. You can't get rid of him. the guy's a road manager." But Tommy Sands, he doesn't know that, so they. They, uh, <laughs> so they act like they're going to fire Willie Maiden. Tommy's very happy. They come in again with the music, and Tommy's wrong again. But the guys in the band can kind of figure it out. Sometimes th this music is written for singers. There may be eight measures of introduction, and then the real song starts. 
Well, if they come in wrong and the band's quick enough, they could tell where they're at and they could make the adjustment, and that's exactly what they did. So when the band had made the adjustment, Tommy was still wrong, but Tommy thought Willie Mayton was wrong because Maynard was blaming him. Tommy was happy. Tommy thought this was great. Tommy's like, oh, my God, this is great. I want Maynard to conduct. So now Maynard's there for one week. Tommy's there for two weeks. So this guy comes in and says, hey, Maynard, we want you here for two weeks. And Maynard's like, well, you know, I, I can't because next week I have to go to New York State Supreme Court for this Timothy Leary thing and thing in Millbrook. And the guy says, oh, I don't know, come with me. So Maynard said they go in the room and there's a guy sitting behind a uh, table with another guy. They're looking at some papers, you know, they said, right out of the Godfather movie. And this guy walks in and he says, hey, uh, Maynard's able to fix this thing with Tommy. Uh, Tommy loves Maynard, and, and the guy says, oh, great, great, great. And Maynard goes, well, I have this, I have to be in New York State Supreme Court next week. And uh, the guy says, uh, for what? And he says, he kind of explains to him what's going on. He goes, hang on. Guy picks a phone up and he makes a call. And Maynard told me the call went like this. He's on the phone and the guy goes, hey, how are you? That's good. Yeah, good. Yeah. How surely? How surely? And, uh, oh yeah, good. Oh yeah. And how, oh yeah. Oh, oh, he's in first grade. Oh, good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, good. Yeah. No names except for whoever Shirley was. And the main is watching this phone call because Luca Brazzi guy's right next to him. And this guy he walked in with, who's the entertainment guy. And this guy's on the phone. He says, look, uh, I got Maynard Ferguson here. I need him here this week and next week. It's got something to do with the, with this New York State Supreme Court thing. If we can like take care of that, it was okay. All right, good. All right, give my best to Shirley. All right, bye bye. Hangs up the phone. The guy looks at Maynard. And he goes, "You're here for two weeks. It's good." The Maynard goes, "Oh wait, 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 I have to go to court next. <laughs> I have to go to, have to go to court next week." The guy says, "No, nah, it's, it's done. It's over. It's gone." The Maynard says, "What?" What do you what, mean? What, it's, do you it's, mean? It's, it's, what do you mean it's gone? It's like postponed or something. Like that. Nah, done. Never happened. Gone. Done. It's over. I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean it's over? I have like boxes and boxes of, you know, lawyer fees. And guys, it's done. Never happened. It's over. It's done. I mean, it's a, That's some uh, gangster uh, shit so right there. Well, wait a minute. I said, no way. It's done. They go. You stay here. Your kids can run around the, the, the floor because where the gambling is, you're not allowed to have kids. But Maynard said his kids could like, they were so grateful that Maynard was going to make Tommy happy. This guy made a phone call and all that stuff went away. And Maynard says, well, what? Well, Power, well, that's what that is. The guy says, listen, it never happened. Go. Well, Maynard says, well, who, who, who'd you talk to? He goes, don't worry about who I talk to. <laughs> he says, well, who are you? Don't worry about who I am. <laughs> and Maynard goes, all right. So he leaves. Over, done. Never happened. All went away. <laughs> Oh, God, what a great story. And it happened at the Sands. So that's why when, that's we walked, when we went by the Sands, he would say, those guys, they really helped me out. That was like a, what a, what a great story. You could just see that. You could just make it, uh, you could make it your own little movie, you know? It could have been a movie. But, uh, that was it. He said, when you play for those guys, like the mob guys, and you play for them, they paid your cash. They made sure you were fed. They understood what... Uh, uh, entertainment was and how valuable it was and they made sure that people had a good time and all of that but uh, they wanted that problem to go away this guy made whoever this guy was made a phone call to who <clears throat> to whoever and the guys are trying to figure out <clears throat> who was Shirley if you if you call somebody that important you know Shirley Chisholm her husband was a Congress person and could have could have been her husband I mean who it, who was politically strong enough who had a wife named Shirley you know, we were trying to figure it out, and uh, we don't know. And uh, every time he told the story, it was a little different. And uh, one time I wrote this story up and I posted it, and people had other information about this story. So I'm sure if anybody takes the time to listen to this thing, this epic, uh, somebody may respond about some info being different, because it was always different, but it was a great story. Maybe because you could just visualize the whole thing. You know, some guy behind a desk. It's over. Don't worry about it. Well, uh, is it going to be a change? It's done. It's over. It went like this. Done. Don't worry about it. It's done. Never happened. Never happened. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs>
<laughs> Where are those guys now? Ooh, I could use them. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, story time with Dennis de Blasio. Get over and show him all the love of the world. I think we could all say that we would like to have somebody like that in our pocket. We're about to jump into Maynard Ferguson, El Dopa from 1970. Let's see what we got. I shall be right back and we'll run it. And we're back with Maynard Ferguson, El Dopa in 1970. Let's jump into it. Let's check it out together and see what we got. If you enjoy it, make sure you get over and show DJ Chairman TV all the love of the world. Go show Maynard Ferguson the love. Let's go. However, I must admit this is my scene right here. It's the big band scene, and we'd like to uh, uh, start our show by doing our tribute to the uh, new wonder drug for all men. Here's El Dopa. <laughs> My God. He could damn so blow that, my Lord. Oh, we got some trumpet and some sax. Trumpets. Music to vibe to. Smooth as hell.
insane. Yes, sir. Everybody is rocking. Damn, pass out. It looks so easy. Didn't even have like a grimace. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Absolutely music that wines and dines your ears. Get over so Maynard Ferguson, all the love in the world. Go so DJ Chairman TV, the love. Smash the like button if you liked it. The dislike button if your ears are broken. Tell the next one about the combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. Love you to the moon and back. Peace.